Is this 575 pound L Glide or Eli Glide M1 worth the money or is it all a facade that looks good but doesn't perform as good? Now I'm intrigued to see for myself so let's put this bike through its paces and see if it's worth purchasing or skipping. Interesting. Out of the box, I'm immediately taken with the packaging. Someone's thought this through. The foam padding is actually stuck to the cardboard, which is pretty nice. Fair warning though, it's got a bit of a heft to it at 22 kilograms with its aluminum frame. This does make it feel pretty solid though. Digging in further, we have a couple of smaller packages to explore. First up, the charged brick, our lifeline to the old electric juice. I'm 21 gigawatts. In the second box, we have new grips complete with an attached accelerator. They've included enough reflectors to rival a disco ball, which is a good thing. Next, the pedals make an appearance, which we will use to assist the battery, or does the battery assist me? Finally, we have the traditional setup tools, little tools that come with the bike, the ones that somehow always end up lost in the depths of your toolbox, but you can't live without them when it comes to doing up that final nut. Now the saddle is secured to the frame with zip ties. It looks good, but we will check the comfort later in the video. The bike's packaging, I must say, is top notch. It's secure, robust, and doesn't leave any room for mishap. However, as eco-conscious as we all strive to be, this much plastic might raise a few eyebrows. That aside, the bike emerges from its protective cocoon looking absolutely pristine, sporting an eye-catching shade of blue. And a quick once over reveals no damage. Not surprising with this packaging, this machine has traveled in style and is ready to impress, hopefully. First up is getting the front wheel attached, allowing the new e-bike to stand up tall. Now to accomplish this, we need to remove the bolts already attached to the wheel, revealing a little washer as well. Now this washer has a hook that corresponds with a hole in the fork to make sure the wheel is aligned. Before we get to the new wheel, the placeholder axle needs to be evicted. Use your 15 mil spanner, one that came with the bike, to loosen the bolts. Once this is done, carefully align the brake rotor with the pads in the brake caliper and slide that wheel into its new home. Just use gravity to help you. As the wheel secures in the position, remember to place the washers on the axle before the bolts. Then tighten the bolts with your 15 mm spanner or wrench. That's the front wheel installed and we are ready to roll. The saddle installation is a delightfully simple process thanks to the user-friendly quick release. Gently slide the saddle post into the seat tube until it reaches your preferred height. Then tighten it back up. This is quick and as straightforward as that. To align the stem and install the bars, First ensure that the stem bolts are loosened, allowing the stem to rotate freely. Now carefully align it with your front wheel, then tighten the top cap just enough to eliminate any play in the headset. And remember, it doesn't have to be ultra tight. <laughs> to install the bars, start by undoing the bolts on the front of the stem. There should be four in total. Be mindful of the small washers attached to each bolt. These little components can be easily lost. Now position the bars in the stem center, loosely tightening a couple of bolts to hold them in place. You can then adjust the handlebars, aligning them centrally and setting the angle as well to your liking so the levers are at the correct angle for you. Once you are satisfied with the placement, proceed to tighten all four bolts. While we're at the front of the bike, let's install the lights. Now ensure the wiring isn't tangled up with any other cables. Locate the necessary bolts from your provided bag of goodies. With this in hand, go ahead Ahead and secure the front light in place. You'll never forget front light again if only there was one on the rear to match. Next up let's get those pedals attached. Fresh out of their shrink wrap you'll find these pedals marked with an L or an R on the axle. This indicates whether it's meant for the left or right side of the bike. Dab a little grease on the threads of the pedals. It might seem trivial but trust me it won't seem trivial when you can't get them off in a couple of years time. The left pedal follows an opposite thread pattern. This means that you need to turn it anti-clockwise to tighten it. The right pedal follows a conventional thread pattern, meaning you tighten it clockwise. The power system on this e-bike comprises a battery and a motor. The battery, boasting a battery protection system, is rated at 7.5 amp hours, 36 volts, and 270 watt hours. Charging it from empty to full will take you approximately 4.5 hours. Bike can be in the shed, battery can be charging in the house. The motor is a 250 watt, 36 volt unit capable of reaching a maximum RPM of 210 and has a maximum output torque of 45 newton meters. Its maximum instantaneous power can hit 500 watts. 
apparently. The moment I hopped on the bike, I was genuinely impressed. The handling was exceptional, largely due to the wide flat bars, which provide ample control. The bike was smooth and responsive, giving you a sense of security and confidence. The control system on this e-bike is delightfully simple as well, with five assist modes to choose from. No fancy screen, just a simple button to click to change the mode. On the topic of modes, mode one offers the least assistance, making it feel more like a regular bike, while mode five gives you the most power, turning hills into gentle inclines. Now, to be honest, I found myself frequently opting for mode five for that extra boost. Mode one basically means you're pedaling the bike yourself and that's pretty hard work considering it weighs 22 kilos. The bike's maximum speed is 25 kilometers an hour, which is in line with UK e-bike laws. Remember though, that that speed limit is just for the motor's assistance. You can always get the thighs going and get that extra speed. Hill climbing is where you really notice the assist of the motor, mainly because you're moving slower and every little bit of help from the motor is felt as you try and push the bike uphill. I tackled a few hills on my ride, nothing to rival Alpe d'Huez, but significant enough to make any cyclist break a little bit of a sweat. The motor had plenty of power to get me to the summit. Summit sounds like Everest. Anyway, as you boost up the hill, there is a distinctive hum from the motor as it sucks juice from the battery like a parched guest at a garden party, but it only adds to the charm. When it comes to ride comfort and suspension, this e-bike is not bad at all. The front suspension has 100 millimeters of travel with hydraulic dampening, which takes those pesky bumps out from under your tires. It's like having your own personal road ironing service for the terrain. If you are road riding, then you can even lock out the suspension so it doesn't sap your energy as you pedal. Very handy indeed. These tires are no mere rubber rings either. They're 27.5 by 2.1 inch. They're basically your personal inflatable donuts offering extra cushioning and a layer of comfort. For the sizing of this bike, there is only one size and L Glide or Ellie Glide claims that the bike can fit riders from 162 to 185 centimeters. Five foot two to six foot basically. Now for reference, I'm a whopping five foot nine, 176 centimeters, the BFG over here, and the bike suited me just fine. Of course, if you're either end of the height spectrum, it may be worth checking the dimensions on the website to ensure it will be a good fit. On the topic of comfort, the saddle is all good. It's like an armchair at the end of a long day, although I'm used to hard road bike saddles, so I may not be the best judge. When it comes to acceleration and speed, think of this e-bike as a loyal, somewhat older dog. It takes a moment to react when you call, but once it gets going, it's full steam ahead. But there are no jerky movements from the motor once the power kicks in. I was very happy with the acceleration and realistically, I wasn't expecting anything more from a 250 watt motor. Now getting up to speed is all well and good, but slowing down is equally as important. The mechanical disc brakes with 160 mil rotors front and rear are pretty decent and they do their job. The next step up would be hydraulic disc brakes, which are pretty desirable on heavier e-bikes like this. Also, when you pull either brake or either lever, that also cuts a motor, which we like to see. You can't accelerate and brake at the same time. All this accelerating and braking comes with its own sort of energy bill. After a hefty 11 mile ride on full power from a full charge, I was down to just half battery life. Now I'd estimate you could squeeze between 15 to 20 miles out of this baby on full power, so mode five, depending on your weight and the terrain that you are tackling. That is pretty good compared to other e-bikes that I have ridden and tried. Now the range claimed by the manufacturer is 65 kilometers in assist mode, but keep in mind, this estimate is based on tests conducted with a 75 kilogram load on a constant speed of 15 kilometers an hour on flat roads. Real well conditions are not that. Hills, right away, and varying speeds are gonna be a given when you're out on a ride, so do bear that in mind when you're thinking about this figure. So is the Ellie Glide M1 electric mountain bike worth buying? Now considering it's only 570 pounds, I say 570, I know that is still a lot of money in the grand scheme of things, but what you get for your money is very, 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 very good. And I would say, yes, it is worth purchasing. When you consider what you get, you got your Shimano gears, for example, so known branded gears. You got 7.5 amp hour battery, decent range, front suspension, which you can lock out as well. It really, really is good value for money. So I was very impressed riding this on different terrains at different speeds. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, I've got other e-bike reviews as well. Do subscribe for more videos incoming and I will see you in the next one.